G'day, Chris here and welcome back to ClickSpring. Next up is a request from Leo Keefe, wanting a bit more detail on the CNC indexer that I use on the lathe. Well, you timed that one well, Lee, because as it happens, I'm just about to cut all of the wheels for the Byzantine sundial calendar. So here's the whole system in pieces before I attach it to the lathe. The key component, of course, is the CNC control box, which I'll show in more detail once it's all plugged in. That drives a 300 Newton centimetre NEMA 28 stepper motor, which in turn drives the Sherline rotary table. I've made an adapter plate as well as a standoff and fastener wheel to hold the whole assembly firmly onto the lathe axis. I've also made an adapter boss that mounts onto the rotary table and then I use a bellows coupling to connect it to an expanding mandrel that is itself designed to lock into the rear of the lathe. Now the mandrel has three parts, a hollow cylindrical body with a set of prongs at one end, a conical expander and a cap screw acting as a threaded drawbar. Once pushed into place, the drawbar can be tightened, pulling back on the expander and thus flaring out the prongs. They then grip firmly on the inside of the ball, holding it in place. Now you might be wondering why I've used an expensive bellows coupling. Well it turns out that my lathe has a rather shocking run out error at the rear of the spindle bore. If left as is, that eccentricity would pull the table off the axis of the lathe, resulting in a small error in tooth spacing around the wheel. So the solution that I came up with was to turn an eccentric spigot on the end of the mandrel and then mount it in such an orientation so as to cancel out most of the error. If you look closely, you can see a pair of witness marks that help me make sure that I get it into the correct orientation each time that I use it. Cancelling that rear bore error was not at all easy. In fact, I made quite a nice little collection of near misses before I got close to what I needed. Eventually though, I got it down to a few hundredths of a millimetre of runout. Close but still not quite good enough to remove the error completely, which is where the bellows coupling comes in. It flexes as it rotates, just enough to accommodate that small remaining misalignment, and it provides the final part of the solution. The rotary table now sits as solid as a rock on the lathe centre line throughout the full rotation. It's also worth mentioning that the Sherline table had a small runout error too, which I solved in a similar way. The spigot was formed in place on the mill, and much like the mandrel, I've put a witness mark in place to make sure that it goes into the correct position each time that I use it. OK, so that's the bits and pieces. Here's how it's all mounted onto the lathe. The control box has four basic modes of operation, and I found the interface to be easy to learn and intuitive to use. One of the big selling points for me on this particular indexer is that the worm gear ratio can be changed within the setup screen. So with some slightly different mounting hardware, I can connect this to my other vertex rotary table or the dividing head that mounts on my mill, and drive them both in a similar way. So to wrap this one up, I'd like to point out that you definitely don't need an expensive CNC indexer to index a lathe spindle. There are many cheap and effective ways to get the angular spacing. Spare change gear wheels, saw blades, the classic dividing plates, even a circular bit of wood and a cheap tape measure will all do the job. And I'll put links to examples of some of these methods in the post text. But a digital indexer does bring some solid benefits. For one thing, it gives any tooth number that you could want. That was my main motivation for getting it. Large numbers and prime numbers will occasionally present a problem depending on your dividing method. This gadget makes any number a non-issue. 
it's also fast and accurate. Once you get into a groove, you can complete a high tooth count wheel in a fraction of the time that it would take using manual methods. And the rotational accuracy is just superb. I did a lot of testing when I first got it, and I simply could not measure any error. I'm sure there was some error in there somewhere, but I just couldn't detect it. And finally, if like me, you occasionally let your mind wander a bit during wheel cutting, then this gadget is the best defence there is against making a bozo mistake. That part of the brain that had to be watching like a hawk for indexing mistakes is now free to focus on everything else that's going on. It takes wheel cutting from being a high concentration, quite fatiguing chore and turns it into just another cruisy afternoon in the shop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.